Iceland, the land of fire and ice. This is a place with stunning landscapes and powerful waterfalls like nowhere else in the world. Along with abundant geothermal activity, massive glaciers, and colorful mountains that resemble pyramids of sand. In this video, we will take you on an eight day journey around this beautiful island called Iceland and its most iconic destinations, as well as the hidden gems we found along the way. We hope you enjoy the video and let's get started on the first part of our journey. Our trip starts in Chicago where we take a quick four hour flight to Reykjavik where we rented a car through a local company called Blue Car Rental. It's 45 degrees outside, it's too hot out and that was freaking cold. Because we arrived at 9 a.m. local time, we didn't want to waste any time and started the first day of our trip in Iceland with the Golden Circle. Right now we're in between both of the tectonic plates where they're actually pulling apart and this is honestly crazy because this has happened over the course of millions of years and these move maybe millimeters not even every year and it's crazy just to see like you're literally walking through history right now. it's crazy So guys, we finished with the National Park and right now we're on the way to the next location and you guys will see what that is. It's going to be a surprise for now. But So we're going through uh, on the Icelandic highways, going through like the meadows and you can see the beautiful scenery all around us. We're just having a great time. We're just driving through the Golden Circle and make sure you guys keep watching to see all the beautiful things that lay ahead. But there may or may not be a waterfall next. I don't know. We'll see and you guys are going to have to stay tuned and find out. Strokura Crater is one of the most famous geysers because it erupts every couple of minutes and shoots water up to 30 meters high. How hot do you think this water is? Well, it says 100, it's a, it says 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, and that's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. That is pretty hot. That is very hot. But it's boiling point, exactly. Look at it, it is absolutely steaming. 100 degrees Celsius. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but that's that's water boiling at an extremely high temperature, and you can see the runoff going all the way down the mountain. I've never seen anything like this. This is incredible. The geothermal activity in this area is a result of Iceland's location on top of the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates meeting point. We're going to the waterfall, also known as Gullfoss, and it's very windy. The water is literally going everywhere. The wind is very strong. It feels like it's raining almost. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is our third stop uh, in our trek around the Golden Circle uh, in this like four hour like round trip that we're doing. So yeah, we got one more stop after this. We finally made it here to the waterfall. I kind of have to yell, the water is very loud because there and are- the wind is loud. Millions of gallons are being poured straight down into the ravine. It is absolutely beautiful, it is very loud. And if you stand all the way over there, the wind will blow all the mist. Wow, so you really do get wet over here. That's crazy. Waterfall of the Gods.
As you can see, the Golden Circle takes less than four hours to complete, so we are now at our final stop. The Carid volcano became unstable after an eruption causing it to fall apart, leaving behind the crater you see today. And all these rocks down here are essentially lava rock. You can pick one up and you can see how it is red in color and it is a lot different compared to the others on the island because of how old they are. And a fun fact is that a lot of alcohol in Iceland is actually filtered through lava rock. Sleep. We've been awake for 38 hours almost. And the sun is perfectly out when it's been cloudy the whole day. We are at the Sky Lagoon this morning. We are just coming here to relax after yesterday. We did the Golden Circle. It was a very long car ride and very long plane ride. And we are tired and want to relax and see what Iceland's hot springs have to offer. Before you enter the lagoon, you have to shower and make sure that your body is nice and clean before you enter the room so you can preserve the hot springs here. So that's very nice and very important. Wow, this water is very warm. Oh, it, feels it feels so, so good. good. It feels so and good. This is the entrance right here. It's like through like a cave and then wow. Stuff by bringing our phones. This is beautiful. Wow. This is a crazy view. The Sky Lagoon Geothermal Spa is situated less than 15 minutes from the city center of Reykjavik. It's a place inspired by Icelandic culture and nature that overlooks the fantastic Atlantic Ocean. The design of this spa is inspired by the country's traditions, history, and heritage. Sky Lagoon is primarily heated by geothermal energy. Honestly, just being here at the Sky Lagoon is an amazing refreshment from the long travel yesterday where we went around the golden circle and we saw all the different beautiful sights that Iceland has to offer and coming off the plane and finally relaxing here in the Sky Lagoon, Sky Lagoon is what I was looking forward to. And you have a beautiful panoramic view. On, be quiet. As you can see, we are currently parked over by this beautiful lake uh, in the middle of Reykjavik. Uh, right behind us is the church tower, uh, which we are on our way to currently. We just parked here, tried to get to some drone shots, but unfortunately, we are still in restricted airspace back. Um, but yeah, no, so we're enjoying taking some nice cinematic shots for you guys over here by the lake. And now we will see you when we are towards uh, the town center of Reykjavik. We are in one of Iceland's most famous destinations, the massive church that they have here, also known as Hagrimskiska in uh, Icelandic. I don't know if I said that correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong, but an absolute beautiful church and the architecture is amazing. And <laughs> I had to double check to make sure it's a church. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's also one of Iceland's tallest buildings. Yeah, I mean, when we were driving around, like, this thing was above every other building. And fun fact, the way it's built is actually kind of like to reflect, like, the lava cast and how they kind of build up over time. 
So that's that's a really cool addition. I think it adds a unique shape to the church, and it's nothing like I've ever seen before. And from what I know, the inside is also extremely big, so I can't wait to go inside. Reykjavik is home to the iconic Hallgrimskirka, which is the tallest church in Iceland. The church took 41 years to build, with construction starting all the way back in 1945 and finishing in 1986. Reykjavik is the capital city of Iceland, and it is also the world's most northernmost capital. Nearly two-thirds of Iceland's population lives in Reykjavik. The city has also been nicknamed the City of Colorful Houses due to the wide variety of color on the exterior of many homes. The reason these houses are so colorful is because back in the day, Iceland as a country was very poor and lacked raw materials like wood and stone. That's why they built their houses out of corrugated steel and concrete. However, they need a coat of paint to prevent rust and a lot of paint that was not in high demand was donated to Iceland, causing many buildings to be painted in a wide variety of unique colors. So now we're stopping by fish and chips for some fish and chips. And we're now eating the legendary fish and chips from Iceland. Looks yummy. So what do you got? What kind of sauce? Lemon pepper and tartar sauce. Okay. Yeah. Is it good? <laughs> That's a beautiful bear. I like bears. The polar bears are cool too. Here is one of those victims. He is passed out at like three in the, three in the afternoon. So yeah. Land Manalaugur is located in the central highlands of Iceland, which means it's a more difficult place to get to. So we're on our way to Land Manalaugur, and we just stopped here, kind of like at the top of this hill. And we're just looking at the glacier and like all the mountains around us. And uh, out here, when you start going out, like. Uh, towards the countryside, instead of saying by Reykjavik, it's a lot more windy and colder and a lot colder. So it's 40 mile an hour winds and I can hardly stand. And it's, you know, pretty chilly, so make sure you come prepared. And if you plan on shooting any videos, bring a microphone with the wind cover because you're not going to be able to it's hear anything. The dead cat. Is it cold outside? No, it's like we're at a beach. It's, yeah, it's cold. Oh my God. It wouldn't be that bad. I can handle cold. But the wind, holy crap. It takes about three to four hours to drive from Reykjavik to Land Manalaugur, so we decided it would make for a great day trip. I think we're in for a bumpy ride. That's the F road. Here's what you guys can see, just driving on some random roads here in Iceland. You can literally just stop on the side of the road, take a little like uh, gravel trail, and you'll end up at a beautiful waterfall right behind me. And you know, it's just stuff like this that you literally could, it's like the road is right there, the main road, and it's just like a hidden location. I mean, it's not really hidden, but we didn't even know it was here, and we just ended up seeing a bunch of cars yeah, stopped know, on the we, road. We don't know what it's called, we don't know where this is, we just happened to find it. Yeah, so that's the beauty of Iceland, it's all over. Ryan, what's going on? So we're on the top part of the waterfall, as you can see, it's right down there, and right here, it's literally crystal clear, it's coming straight from the glacier. And because of that, it is very cold. Yeah, so we had to bring out the rain jackets because they actually started downpouring a lot heavier now. That's the thing with Iceland. The weather can change whenever and wherever. <laughs> so pretty much you always have to be prepared. 
I can barely talk because my lips are freezing over. If you can hear my lisp. So, at like, even though the weather says it's like 38 degrees, 40 degrees, the wind chill brings it all the way down to like 10, 20 degrees, maybe 15 degrees, and we're not prepared for that kind of temperatures. But man, it is cold. Bring gloves. Make sure you bring gloves because this is my biggest regret. He has gloves and I do not, and my hands are freezing. We continued driving to Land Manalaugar, but we saw a lot of cars stopped at a nearby parking lot, so we wanted to check out the area. We had no idea what was waiting for us, but we were very glad we decided to stop. When we got closer to the edge of the valley, we had realized why all those cars were stopped earlier. This view was one of our favorites from Iceland due to how unique and beautiful these waterfalls were. We had no idea these waterfalls were here and we had no intention of making a stop here, but I'm glad we did. This is an example of one of those hidden gems we were talking about earlier, and I highly recommend checking this place out on your way to Land Manalaugar. during the summer solstice, there still is a bunch of snow everywhere, especially when you start heading out of Reykjavik. You start, you're gonna be able to see all the snow caps and all the mountains all around. And in some places, it's even still snowing during the summer. So that's a cool thing to know. And this landscape, I can't get enough of it. It is absolutely beautiful. Going for a fucking swim. We're still on the way to Land Manalaugar. We're taking all these like scenic stops. We don't even know like that all the stuff was on the way, but we just ended up finding it. And here's like this very big river. It kind of connects over there. There's like a small waterfall, which is really cool. Really cool, awesome. Everything is very cool and awesome over here. I mean, you got a bunch of people biking on the road, which I would not be able to survive. It's very windy. It's raining. It's like everything's just being thrown at you in Iceland. If you're not prepared, you're gonna struggle here for sure. It's very cold too. It is cold. Manalauja. Me and Dylan decided to take the scenic view while we're going uh, on these gravel roads and let's just say the scenic view is very scenic. It's actually it's quite bumpy but it's a lot more comfortable being out here like this than it is to actually be inside the car. And it's a lot more fun too. Yeah, it's a lot more fun. As you can see we are almost at Land Manalauger. If you don't have a 4x4 vehicle you can park at the parking lot right before the water crossing. You can walk around the side along the mountains to get to the start of the trail like we did.
warm geothermal pools, as you see, that little hot spring that everyone's taking a bath in, uh, that's all heated by lava that's actually underground here. Oh, wow. Ow, yeah, that's hot. That's really hot. Is it hot? Yeah, it is very it's really hot. hot. It's really hot. Ooh. These mountains, I just can't get enough of them. They're absolutely stunning jaw-dropping you can literally put any word and it'll fit with these mountains because this is just like it's something out of a movie almost like i can't even believe that we're here right now and it's just like this is the most like perfect hike perfect conditions well not really perfect it could be sunny but i'm happy it's not raining there's no wind and it's actually pretty warm out so that's sweet i'm gonna be honest with you guys this view is something out of i don't know if anyone knows the website this is sand but it's like a website where you kind of just clicked and draw drew like pyramids with sand with different colors and it, it looks exactly like this but we still got quite the track to reach the rainbow mountain uh so let us go on the rainbow road So guys, as you can see, these are some of the geothermal vents that cause the rock colors of uh, this mountain here to change different colors, different temperatures, different densities and pressures of these geothermal vents uh, cause the different coloration of the rocks. And this is all coming out, all the steam and all this heat's coming out because there's actually a lot of lava still right underneath us. We have finally made it to the top, right next to the Rainbow Mountain. Yeah, no, this Rainbow Mountain is something to behold, that's for sure. We're about to show you guys some clips of it, and it looks absolutely beautiful. The reason why Landmine Alauger has so many different colors on the side of the mountain is because of the magma in the area. It contains a mineral called rhyolite which causes the multicolored appearance that has become synonymous with the region. And that's why the mountain appears in over five colors, red, blue, pink, green, and yellow. The Land Mount Alauger experience was something out of this world and we have never seen anything like it before. We are very happy we had a chance to explore one of Iceland's most interesting mountains and scenic hikes. If you are going on a trip to Iceland, this is a must see. You should definitely come here if you are in Iceland. On our way back right now. <laughs> the flies. So we're on our way back right now and the sun actually just came out for a little bit and we were able to see this lake with the reflection of the sun and the clouds and it looks a lot better now than it does than it did when we were coming up here because when we were coming up here it was kind of gloomy, it was raining. But now as soon as we leave, of course, it starts looking very nice. The weather is becoming almost perfect. Just the calm serenity of just driving through Iceland is something you really have to experience. It was about 9 p.m. when we were leaving the highlands and driving back to our hotel in Reykjavik. We were really tired from all the hiking, but it was still an amazing experience. On the next day, we had one of the longest drives of our entire trip because we were driving all the way through Snaffleness and up to Isafjordr with a lot of stops along the way. We just, this 
we were just driving down the road, uh, continuing further north, and we saw this waterfall, so we wanted to stop by and take a look at it. The a very famous spot to stop here at the on the Snefonis Peninsula is the Black Church, which is actually coated black due to the tar that they use because uh, it has to survive the harsh Iceland elements. This is one of our stops along uh, Snuffleup Peninsula, and here we just see all the seagulls, and they are pretty aggressive, as you guys saw in the in the video. Right now, they're just kind of just like chilling on the rocks, nesting, I guess. And there's just a beautiful view of the cliffs. We continued driving around Snafflenest Peninsula toward our next destination, the Kirkufell Waterfall. <laughs> Kirkufell Waterfall is right next to Mount Kirkufell which is still on Snafflenest Peninsula. This is one of Iceland's most popular and iconic sites, especially for photographers. Our next stop is Kirikufell, which is a waterfall. As you can see behind us, it's very beautiful, uh, probably because of this really gorgeous mountain right to the left of us, and then this awesome mountain range right behind us to our right. In West Iceland, there's a bridge called Kolgrafavgur, which resembles a sword from the air. This bridge, which is called the Sword Bridge, stands as a reminder to Iceland's Viking history. Stikish Holmor is a small fishing village situated in the western part of Iceland and in the northern part of Snaffleness Peninsula. It is the center of services and commerce for the area with most residents actually making their living from fishing and tourism. in sticky slow mud for some fresh fish and chips. <laughs> These Icelandic names are very hard to pronounce if you can't tell. So we just stopped in sticky slow mud. Sticky slow mud. How do you say it? So we're in sticky slow mud and we decided to stop here because we saw all over the internet that the freshest fish and chips come from here and we know why because we can see a bunch of fish being unloaded right off the boats. The wind is loud, I can't wait to get some fresh fish and chips. We're gonna ask if he sells fish and chips. He probably doesn't. So we have to. 
it's not a fish and chips. Why are you laughing? What are you doing? I can have two fish. So I got my hands full with some uh, fresh and hot fish and chips, and I can't wait to try. Looks good. You can see from the footage here that the weather can change very suddenly and drastically here in Iceland, and it's important to always be prepared for it. After exploring Snafelnes Peninsula for most of the day, we are now finally heading to Dejandi, which is about a four-hour drive from Stikesholmor. We have made it to the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. It's kind of cold, it's a little windy. The road to get here and to get to West Fjords is very beautiful. Oh, that means it is very beautiful, but it's also very rough and brutal. Uh, the roads aren't paved, a lot of sharp turns with no guardrails. It's, it's pretty sketchy, but in my opinion, it's all worth it. We've made it to Dejandi to see this beautiful waterfall that everyone always talks about, and we went out of our way just to see it. Dejandi is a waterfall located by the Arnafjordr Fjord and has been called the Jewel of the West Fjords. It is the largest waterfall in the West Fjords which has a height of about 100 meters. This waterfall is definitely one of our favorite waterfalls and the area surrounding Dejandi is absolutely beautiful. To reach Dejandi, there is a bit of a hike, no more than 15 minutes, and on the way up, you can stop by the smaller waterfalls that Dejandi creates. A rocky path made by volunteers back in 1996 guides you up towards Dejandi, but I gotta warn you, it's a bit of a climb, and you'll probably get a little wet too. These are the climbs down from the waterfall. So far, we've only seen a little bit of what the West Fjords have to offer, and I'm already like amazed with this beautiful, beautiful island. Because we arrived so late in the evening, there were actually not a lot of people there at Dejandi, so we were able to take advantage of some beautiful footage with not a lot of tourists running around in the background. That, in all honesty, was the best tasting water I've ever had. Don't Nothing be jealous has... of <laughs> I've never had water that tasted better than that. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it, it's just the best tasting water ever. It's so clear, so clean, it tastes like what water should taste like. And it's wet like water too. It's also very wet. Yeah. Yeah. Dejandi Falls, guys. Dejandi Falls. Ah. Oh. After exploring Snafelnes Peninsula for most of the day, we are now finally heading to Isafjordur, where we are staying for the night. And it should only be about an hour drive to get there from Dejandi. So, what's funny is that the GPS actually told us to go this way, and this road has not been used in a very long time. As you can see, of the big boulders and rocks that you know started falling from landslides and such. But right down here is actually where the brand new, freshly paved road is, which is right by the coast, which is a lot nicer and a lot smoother. So make sure you guys always double check because uh, we probably would have been we probably would have gone through a tire or two on this road. Currently, we are driving through a massive tunnel. We're driving through the six kilometer tunnel to Isefjordor, where we are staying there for the night. So that's the one I should fight, right? Yeah. 
so you can find these all over just you know on the side of the road i guess and uh i'm gonna try talking to them you know he's staring me down i'm fighting that bitch Ma. Dude, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna no. He's staring me down. I'm fighting that bitch. <laughs> oh my god. Our drive to Isafjordur was very special. It was midnight, but still light outside. And we were the only car on the road, making it feel like we were all alone. The clouds and giant fjords had a very mysterious feel to them, and it was an incredible thing to experience. That is so wild. Wow. Now this is a tunnel. Holy shit. <laughs> it's literally one lane. We're the only idiots driving through this tunnel at 10.45 at night. So we finally made it to the place we're staying. It's almost one in the morning. It's currently like 12.33 or something like that. And we're right in between the fjords in this small little fishing town at Isofjordur. We've been driving here the whole day. It was maybe a six hour drive, but like since we're sightseeing the whole day, it took us a long time. And it is kind of chilly and the rain is, uh, is making the cameraman a little shaky. <laughs> and I can't wait to get some rest. This is where we're staying, you know, everyone in town is asleep right now, but we just came in and what's really cool about our TV is that it is actually a very big projector and there's the white screen over here. We're going to go over to the kitchen real quick and there's actually a basement, which is pretty sweet and this is our kitchen and I honestly think that this is beautiful and especially just for one night. <laughs> Isafjordur is a town in the West Fjords region of Northwest Iceland, and it's known for its dramatic landscapes. The old town has wooden houses with corrugated tin roofs built by fishing merchants in the 18th and 19th centuries. It's a very old looking town, but the views are absolutely stunning as it's nestled between two separate fjords. Last night we arrived in Isafjordur. Isafjordur actually gets its name from the literal, if you take apart the word, the meaning is town of ice, which is very fitting because over here, it's supposed to snow and rain all the time. This is a kind of like an older fishing village. Now it's kind of become more modernized, but it was founded in like the late 18th to 19th century by fishing merchants. Although we only spent a couple of hours in the morning at Isafjordur, we really enjoyed the peaceful atmosphere and beautiful nature at this town between the fjords. But we had to keep moving to our next destination for the night, Hofsos, which included a lot of driving. Good morning, Stretchin. <sighs> So we're still traveling through the West Fjords and you know, we're just stopping along the way because there's just so many waterfalls here and so many things to see. There's just like 
so many stops that we haven't even planned because there's just so much to see here like you're just driving on the side of the road and you just see like a beautiful big waterfall that i didn't even see online and you just experience like just traveling through it, iceland and its truest form and right now we actually have some really good weather which i'm very excited and happy for because in the morning we had a little bit of blue sky but we weren't able to catch it but looks like the sun over there is starting to come out a little bit and the water has calmed down we're able to see the reflection of the fjords on the water for a very beautiful scene. We have three beautiful waterfalls here. Whew, the hike to that to that first one that you see on my left is actually really beautiful and it was pretty scary but we couldn't go on top and see because it was too too steep and too slippery but there's just waterfalls galore all over here i mean there's one over there there's one over there there's one over there there's one over there there's one over there, one over there, one over there. they're all over because of the glaciers and the fjords are honestly a beautiful place and i just can't wait to keep exploring after doing some research later on, we found out that the waterfall we found is Valagil Waterfall, which is an unknown waterfall located in the West Fjord of Iceland at the end of the fjord Alftafjordur. Since we were driving on Road 61 from Isafjordr to Holmavik, we drove along the Alftafjordr, so we happened to find it along the way. Another waterfall. The wooden church of Grafarkirka is full of mysticism and Icelandic history. It's located in northern Iceland and it was about 4 kilometers south of the village of Hofsos where we were staying for the night. You see in there? Yeah. Oh, that's fucking scary, dude. <laughs> scary. Wait, really? Dude, what the f***? Are you serious? Yes, dude. That's like every single fucking horror movie I've seen where that involves like a church and shit. <laughs> Look in there. <laughs> Just stay that Stay that I wanna look. <laughs> I wanna look. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I wanna f*** up. Don't touch me. Oh, wow. That's... Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> that looks that looks scary. The wood is so like well preserved inside. You wanna go inside? Don't touch it. <laughs>
just arrived at our Airbnb or uh, house for the night in Hofsauce. Uh, we're just uh, a little bit further north from when you guys last saw us at the church. But this is where we're going to be staying uh, for the night tonight. We're going to take a nice little rest and we'll get back out on the road tomorrow. So we just got to our uh, next place that we're staying tonight. And we're just enjoying some tea, looking at the river and how it's meeting the ocean. Just listening to the water and relaxing it's 10 o'clock right now even though it looks like it might be like six o'clock it's 10 o'clock and we're almost ready for bed and we got another long day ahead of us tomorrow on day six we wanted to take the more scenic route but it was much longer since we passed through Sigil Fjord. but unfortunately it was raining and covered in fog so we didn't really get to see much On our way from Hafsos, we went through Sigofjordur, which was supposed to be a beautiful scenic road, but as you guys saw, it was very cloudy and very kind of gloomy, which sucks. So we're on our way to the Goda Falls from Akureyri, and it's about 38 minute drive. We'll see how long it takes us because we're stopping along the way, taking videos and having fun. So we'll see you guys when we get there. So while we're looking at the Gudafoss waterfalls, we actually noticed that this is one of the way bigger ones that we have seen. We've seen ones that are that have been like 50 meters high, 50 meters tall, whatever you want to call it. But this is probably the widest basin and the widest like, uh, and there's like four waterfalls all connecting into one. And it just flows into a big river, which is honestly, I would not want to swim in there. That river is very powerful. So that water be careful. Is very quickly. Very quickly with a lot of power, so make sure you always be careful when you're looking at waterfalls because they can take you in an instant. So a little history on Godafoss. It is actually referred to as the waterfall of the gods because Thorgir, uh, a viking that was here, uh, turned to Christianity and as a result, through these pagan totems of his past religion down the waterfalls, which is why they're called the Waterfall of the Gods. Godafoss is right off of Ring Road, so the main road that everyone uses in uh, Iceland, and this is up where near the northern part of Iceland currently. So this is the history behind Godafoss or the Waterfall of the Gods. diving on the whale watching trip? Yep. You look like a firefighter. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you look like. I don't know if I'm ready to go fight some fires or go fight some whales. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Tight. 
Mine's kind of tight at the bottom, but it's whatever. Mine's kind of tight at the top. So we're ready to go do some whale watching. This is something I've never done before. This is awesome. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. I, I never thought I'd be excited to go whale watching. I always see the movies and think it's boring, but this is really cool. We are headed out right now. Uh, there's like, you can see dolphins, orcas, blue whales, sperm whales, all these different types of whales. I was shocked at how much you could see it. And the one thing we're really hoping to see today orcas. is puffins. Puffins. Orcas. <laughs> Oh, very close to us, sorry, that's good sight. Wow. Are we still there? Oh, that's a video. That was one of the best things we did here in Hosavik, which was whale watching. And the reason that the whales are protected here and they're not being hunted is because of us, is because of the tourists. And all the whales here that come here, they're safe, they're protected. And that's honestly beautiful because some whales here in Iceland actually do get hunted. What did you think about it, Dylan? I thought it was really cool how uh, even the tour guide said how it was really special and rare for so many dolphins and whales to constantly be around us and she said that they can even, it, it takes them like 12 minutes to surface at a time sometimes. They were surfacing once every 30 to a minute and 30, right? So it was, it was a lot, it was very, uh, it happened very often for them to surface and they also showed off their tails a lot which also apparently is very rare and doesn't happen much. So I was really grateful that we were we were able to experience that and have such a lucky trip. Mivaten is a shallow lake situated in an area of active volcanic activity in the north of Iceland near Krafla volcano. It has a high amount of biological activity with the lake and surrounding wetlands providing a habitat for a number of wet water birds, especially ducks. The Skutustalakigar pseudocraters are called pseudocraters as they are not caused by an actual explosion of volcanoes, but are a byproduct of their flowing lava. This natural phenomenon takes place when hot lava flows over cool, wet grounds and pressurizes the earth downwards. This causes steam to be trapped under the weight of the lava, producing extreme pressure. When this pressure becomes too great, steam explosions are triggered, creating depressions in the ground to form these mesmerizing craters. Lake Mivaten is located just south of the Ring Road and was easily accessible since it was on our way to the Detifoss waterfalls. Just arrived at Daddy Foss Waterfall. 
This waterfall is the second most powerful waterfall in all of Europe. It's incredible. It's 300 feet wide and 144 feet tall. It's absolutely massive. A river from a nearby glacier feeds Deddy Foss Waterfall as it collects water and sediment-rich runoff which colors the water in a grayish white. o'clock at midnight in Iceland right now and since the sun never sets it only kind of sits on the horizon you have this like permanent like sunset lighting with the orange the pink the red and it makes for amazing pictures with the waterfalls and it just adds so much value to every picture you take it's midnight right now and the sun is just setting. This is the midnight sun, pretty much, as they all call it. And it's gonna rise again at 1.30 in the morning. So we're gonna have a little bit of darkness, not even, because it's still pretty light out, even though the sun sets. But yeah, it's nonstop. Like, we've been going to bed here at like 1, 2 in the morning, because we've just been exploring the whole day. And it's honestly just crazy. Like, it's just like a different kind of experience here and a different kind of like energy. We're just exploring the whole day. After a full day of exploration, by the time we came to our place for the night, Grimstunga guest house, it was almost 1am in the morning. The next morning we woke up early and started driving to the eastern part of Iceland, Borgafjordr, to hopefully see some puffins. We just stopped at this viewpoint real quick, just to rest up right before we're about to see some puffins. Very beautiful today. We got very lucky because we haven't seen the sun that much in Iceland. It's been raining, it's been gloomy, it's been cloudy. Today, right when we were seeing puffins right by the ocean, we get some beautiful water and I'm really excited. So we just got into this small town called Borgarfjord Estere. About 10,000 pairs of puffins nest every summer in Borgafjordr. This is probably the easiest and safest place to watch puffins in Iceland. There are multiple shelters and wooden platforms where you can get really close to the puffins without the risk of falling into a burrow or down a cliff. You can see puffins nestling here from mid-April to mid-August.
don't think I'm ever going to see another puffin in my life. So I think it was a very unique experience. You have to come and try it. And they're just so beautiful. They're so small. They're like, they're so incredibly cute. I'm really happy we got to see them. Look at this amazing view. Just stopped again on the way to Hoffen. There's this beautiful waterfall right behind us. And in Hoffen, hopefully we get to see some really cool things. We're going to see a very cool lighthouse that is on the way. So we're supposed to see a lighthouse. And if we might be lucky, there is a movie set that we know that is around there, around Hoffen, but I'm not really sure exactly where it is. So we're gonna try and find it. And it's like a small Viking village that's like made completely out of wood and like in a canyon. And I think that would be really cool to see. I just like taking pictures of waterfalls. He does. We'll see you guys when we get to the to the to the lighthouse if we don't make any other random stops. Well, guys, I lied. Our next stop isn't the lighthouse. We took another stop, and here's another waterfall. When we started driving towards southern Iceland, it started to get colder and much foggier. cloud right now and we're at the lighthouse the visibility sucks we can barely see the water it's still a really cool kind of like uh icelandic picture i guess because this is normally kind of like what you really get when you come to iceland because most of the times online you see these beautiful sunny pictures but in reality you're probably gonna have rain or fog or stuff like that so kind of true to how iceland really is and let's just say if I saw this, you definitely see because it, it is very, very bright. It's a bright orange lighthouse. So if you're at if you're at sea, you'll see it 100%. But in this fog, I'm not so sure, honestly. guest house in Hoffen for the night and they have a uh, like a public kind of kitchen for like people to use and they also make breakfast in the morning which is very nice but right now I'm making a I'm using a bunch of ramen packets I'm also using some hot dogs and I'm hopefully gonna make something tasty using this sweet and sour sweet chili sauce and some peppers and peanuts making like a little kind of noodle mix, I guess. And this is the final product. <laughs>
Mount Vesterhorn is located on Iceland's east coast, just along the small fishing village of Hof, where we stayed for the night. The mountain is located just a short distance off of Iceland's main ring road and will take you about 10 minutes to get there from it. Guys, me and Brian have made a discovery today. We can walk on water. As you can, as you can tell, uh, it's not actually true, but the tide went away. It went really far back. And this is actually just sand with a little bit of water on here. And it's giving off the full reflection as if it were water. And it literally looks like we're walking on water right now. I can assure you there's water. I did not wear the proper shoes for this because I did not expect to be doing this. But it's really cool, right Brian? And it's very cold. <laughs> and it's very cold, holy. But we're on our way to the Viking village right now. Uh, there's uh, some fragments of it right here already we can see but the main big village is back there and it's such a cool village with amazing scenery with these mountain tops behind us with these clouds kind of covering them up it, it's just this whole day feels so obs obscure like it, this feels so cool like I never I never thought this is what happened when we come here and if we would have came here earlier who knows maybe we wouldn't have discovered the walking on water thing that we're doing right now right yeah so always do fun stuff in Iceland around one in one in the morning. Yeah, basically, don't go, don't be afraid to go out at one a.m. Yeah. Basically. This is our last full day in Iceland and we will be exploring the southern portion of Iceland. One of the biggest attractions that we're going to see is all the glaciers. Good morning guys. Today is our last full day in Iceland sadly. It's been so beautiful here, we've had a great time. But sadly, it has to come to an end. What did you think? I thought it was really fun. We still got more to do today. Uh, we have yet to stop by the Diamond Beach yet. It's just down the river, so we're gonna go check that out after this. Right here is Glacier Lagoon, and it's something that I don't think we'll ever see again in our lifetime, uh, unless you come back here. Lagoon has still blue waters that have icebergs floating downriver from the surrounding Vatnajökull glacier. The glacier lagoon flows through a short waterway into the Atlantic Ocean, leaving chunks of ice on a black sand beach, otherwise known as the Diamond Beach. We just crossed the bridge. We're just on the other side of where we just were, right by Glacier uh, Lagoon. It's very close. Literally, the bridge we were under is right over there. But we are currently on Diamond Beach. It is called Diamond Beach because there's not actually diamonds here, but there's shards of ice that are so clear they sparkle like diamonds. And this, if you want to come visit here yourself, it's only like four to six hours from Reykjavik. Another fun fact, which uh, as you can see right behind me, there's the river with a bunch of icebergs flowing down. And the reason that the icebergs are actually so blue is because they have a bunch of sand, gravel, air bubbles, and ice and stuff like that in it, and it causes them to only reflect blue. So in the sunlight, you can only see the really nice deep blue. So yeah, that's, uh, that's Diamond Beach for ya.
After spending our morning at the Glacier Lagoon, we started to drive back towards Reykjavik. Before getting too far, we suddenly saw a road that seemed to lead towards the glaciers and we decided to explore it. Bjalsadalon is a glacial lake in Iceland located on the southern end of the Vatnajökull glacier. This wasn't one of our planned stops, but after seeing it from a distance and checking it out, we agreed that this was worth stopping for. We were just at another gas station, but we couldn't figure out how to fill up the gas because the card wasn't working and stuff like that. We ran into some technical difficulties, but over here at a different gas station at Oli's, we have, where we actually have a discount on the gas from the car rental, car rental like dealership, which is pretty nice. And here in like Iceland, they go by liters instead of gallons. We just tanked up for 13,000 Icelandic Corona, maybe a uh, hundred plus dollars so it's it's pretty expensive for gas over here it's actually one of the most expensive places for gas here and Norway so road tripping is gonna suck Svina Svelsjökull is an outlet glacier of Vatnajökull the largest ice cap in Europe it is one of the country's most popular places for glacier hiking due to its incredible formations and excellent views. We're at Svinasfels Jokel Glacier, and we actually found a road that brought us straight up to the glacier, a lot closer than any other other roads that we've seen. And right here, we're able to see this glacier is kind of like muddied up by like dirt and rock and sand and all that. But if you look further behind me, there's a much nicer, more pure, uh, blue and white glacier which is also very nice a lot of private travel companies and all those people offer tours and hikes up this glacier and all the way up to the highest peak in Iceland which is around here I don't exactly know where it is it could be behind those clouds Manas del Snukur is also located in Vatnajökull National Park and its summit is the highest point in the country Vik is a remote seafront village in South Iceland that sits in the shadow of Mirdesjökull Glacier which covers the Katla volcano. Because we were running out of time for our Blue Lagoon appointment, which was at 8.15pm, we only stopped for a couple of minutes at the Black Sand Beach. Skogafoss is one of the biggest waterfalls in Iceland, with a drop of 60 meters and a width of 25 meters. The best part is that you can walk right up to it, but I recommend wearing some waterproof clothing because you will get soaked if you aren't. I was under the waterfall and now I am wet. here is Seljalan Foss and this is one of the uh, waterfalls in Iceland that you can actually walk behind and there's like uh, steps where you can walk behind and it's extremely cool very popular 
We're actually sadly going to be late to the Blue Lagoon tonight because we got a little bit off schedule. Hopefully we still make our uh, reservation time. Let's go explore. The Selja Lans Foss waterfall is located in the southern region right by Route 1. The waterfall has a drop of 60 meters and is part of the Selja Lans River. Well, we got soaking wet and we're just drying off our rain jackets, but we got to change our pants. So if you're going to, if you're going to come here, make sure you dress appropriately or else you're going to get soaked. And just like that, we are headed to our last destination for the day and for our trip here in Iceland, the famous Blue Lagoon. Guys, we have finally made it to the destination I've been looking forward to this entire trip. It is the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. Unfortunately, we are a little late. It closes at 11 o'clock tonight. Hopefully we get to still have a lot of fun. Finally made it to the Blue Lagoon. We have maybe about an hour before it closes. We came a little bit late, which sucks, but it's freezing. We did our pre-bath rinse and we're ready to go in. And I don't know if we're gonna be filming much because the salt is very corrosive and we do not want to ruin our equipment. So we're just probably gonna be enjoying tonight. <laughs> Let's go. So we finally made it to our final destination pretty much which was the Blue Lagoon It was our final destination for today and pretty much our final destination for our whole trip here in Iceland It's a beautiful place to go and relax Sadly, it's our last day, but honestly, I was kind of looking forward to relaxing in here and it is There's just so much to do in the lagoon because you have different sauna steam baths and different like face masks as well It's not just like a hot bath filled with a bunch of random people. You also get to enjoy some other things but you only can have the sauna and steam baths if you pay for like the premium like uh, pass. But normally, you know, it's still fun to come here and relax and soak in. But here's our trip in Iceland. <laughs> 